Thank you, Leslie. We are now living on higher ground. And it was good to hear the words of one of our old songs there too, which we must start singing again. Well, today's message is one which uh, I needed. And I've had a good week to think about it and meditate on it and ponder on it. And it's all about it won't let go. I'll explain what I mean by the word it as we go on in case some people think I'm being disrespectful about it, but it covers a lot. Now, we know amongst the spiritual laws, there is the law of circulation. If we want to receive, we have to give. And that's not only on a physical level, but on a spiritual level as well. Many of us have had to put this to the test, put away old spiritual ideas, which don't serve us anymore. And also to put away physical things, because as we know, we have stages of life and we collect things that we need at that stage of life, or we think we need. Sometimes we think, I've got to have that latest CD or whatever, or I've got to have that piece of clothing to look as if I'm up with the fashions. And when I look back at some of my fashions, I'm very glad to get rid of them especially my old, do you know, I actually wore flares. And I'm sure some of you here look back on some of the outfits that we've had. And I look at some of these things that go on in Hollywood, these galah nights, and I think, my God, who could imagine anyone would wear that? And Lady Gaga in question, she always ceases, never ceases to amaze me with whatever she's going to come up with. And, but you know, when you think back, I've got drawers here, I've got cupboards, I've got things here, I've got seven old harmoniums in the garage. I can only play one. And I've eventually will get rid of a lot of these things and downsize. One that we've all shared in, or some of us here, us old unitics, we've got in our old church, we have a basement. Now, we don't refer to it a basement now because we call it a foundation room because we've now done it up, we've jazzed it up, it's been painted, and we now have functions in it. We have a couple of meetings in it from time to time. And that used to be the biggest collector of stuff you've ever seen, books in particular. Some of you here will remember we had book sales, and the more we gave away, the more people donated books, and it was just like it never ended. So we had to change our thinking about this. And with the committee and whoever else was around at the time, we decided that let's paint it. It took an effort and a change of thinking. And when books came in, we just had to let them go to other people and we had to move on. However, there's one thing that we can't give away. And that is the desire to be, the desire to be spirit in expression. And that spirit wants to express and express and express, and it really doesn't care how, but it will. It'll express in the best possible ways so that it comes out. I've mentioned to you before, watching plants grow up through the, the cracks in the, in the cement. That's the power of spirit. And other things we just see, nature just can't help itself. We cannot give this power away because that desire to be is the very stuff that we are. We are it in expression. Now, a bit of humility here. We didn't invent it. It's there, but we are it in expression. We can't give it away. Yet there are times when it seems it has given us away. We've all had those feelings, the old fashioned way it was called, the dark night of the soul. And many mystics write about this, but we don't need to worry about their writing because everyone here has had a time when you feel that power has left us. 
It hasn't really. It's in perspective when you think parents sometimes have to step back and let their children go through certain experiences so that they can fend for themselves in later life. But the parents are always there in the background, close by, to make sure that everything will be all right. But in the meantime, the circumstances young people go through, or, or any of us, can be quite trying at times. And a mystic writes about it. They're some of the things we've heard about, the mystics, St. John of the Cross, St. Francis and others. And a mystic is one of those who is just immersed in spirit. They can't help themselves. Same as we've all had those moments, those extremely powerful moments in our life. And it could be something as simple as just looking out the back yard and seeing a plant that we've seen a thousand times and all of a sudden going, wow, look at you. This is amazing. Something resonates inside with us about that. So if we're serious about our spiritual path and everyone here is, otherwise we wouldn't be here. And we wouldn't be here if we didn't have our mystic experiences and dark nights of the soul. We would sort of not be taking life seriously on our spiritual truths. Because sometimes when spirit, we think spirit has stepped back from us, isn't it doing the same thing as our parents did for us? It's making sure that we have faith. I won't say testing our faith, but it's making sure we make use of our faith and our belief, that power of belief in spirit that is always there and will never let us go. So how are we using this power? Well, we know there are spiritual laws and isn't it good that we know them? Because if we don't, life can be quite bumpy. It's gonna be bumpy anyway, but with the laws of spirit, my goodness, what wonderful tools we have to help us through life. This life in all its stages, its blessings and challenges. So if we don't know about these laws, we're at a disadvantage. And that's why it's important that we share our truth with people. And I'm looking forward to when we get back to having workshops and other things like that and teaching people and discussing with people these spiritual laws. There's only a few, but they're so powerful. And if we break the laws, we're not punished by God or some stern old man in heaven. We're punished by our misuse of the law. That's all. But even then, there's a blessing. If we have learnt the lesson and we are really, really sorry, we move on and we are moving on through the law of grace, which is always there. God's continuous love for us shows up in many ways, the law of grace. So Yogananda talks about a couple of things which he brought to the West. He combined the East and the West in a wonderful way, especially in that book, Autobiography of the Yoga. And he talks about it. It is the very substance we're made of. Yogananda calls it the dream. The spirit is the dream. And we, the matter, are that dream in action. And another term he uses, which is called spiritualized mind stuff, which is what this is, this world. Spiritualized mind stuff, the dream is always there. And that dream is always there because there's always something further on down the line that is going to express more spirit. Before the days of television and radio, imagine what it must be like in the middle of winter a little tiny country Victorian town, as you see many of them up here in the bush, what would they do for entertainment at night? I suppose the sun goes down and um, you have your fire, but there was no radio, no television, probably not even a piano. And as time goes, gave on, the piano 
was the main thing that people enjoyed, are musical instruments. Then you look at what we've got now. We complain because there's nothing to watch on television. How many channels have we got that we need to, to decide? I remember in, uh, when television first came to Tasmania, we had two channels and we, we thought, oh, there's, you know, we've got everything we want to watch. But there comes a time when even that wasn't enough. And now look at us, here we are, all together on Zoom. So that technology was always there. But in time, when we're ready, it's there for us, especially, and hasn't it been unique for us at this particular time in the world's transition to higher ground? We talk about it, it's just a play on words. I'm talking about that word which many people have an issue with, the word God. Call it anything. Universal intelligence. The great architect of the universe is one I like. I think that's a Masonic term and that's supposed to be secret. I'm not supposed to know that but I have heard a couple of things. My father was in, in the Masons and uh, he wouldn't tell us anything, but he left the book out one night and I did read a little bit of it. And it was quite fascinating, very spiritual group on that level. Now, every time we say it, and every time we say the words, I am, we are using it. We are using it consciously. And if this great power left us, we wouldn't be. A few years ago, uh, when we were all back at the sanctuary, didn't we have some wonderful times with our book club? We have some beautiful books. And I know one of them's coming back and I think someone was inquiring about it, how to pray without talking to God. That is now part of a workshop, which is coming up in prayer uh, from the Unity National School very soon. But one that sticks out in my mind is Greg Graydon's book called The Divine Matrix. I think Leslie and Jeanette, I think you two were co-sharing that. In that book, he uses modern language to explain spirit. The same way that Yogananda used what he used for his generation, Graydon uses the same thing. He uses the word matrix. He didn't invert that word. So when did this word start creeping into our consciousness? Enter Max Planck, 1858 to 1947, uh, a physicist who originated another word which has come into our consciousness, quantum. And he originated the quantum theory, which won him the Nobel Peace Prize in 1918. It's been around a while, it's taken a while for it to get into our consciousness. Have a listen to what he wrote in the old days. All matter originates and exists by virtue of a force. And we must assume that behind this force, the existence of a consciousness, an intelligent mind, this mind, is the matrix of all matter. And the date after this is 1944. So it's always been there, it's always been that we didn't invent it, but we are it. We are the canvas, the paints, and the brushes. We can create anything we can dream about good or not so good, but we know that we take the consequences if it's not for the good of all or if it's against universal spiritual law. So we try and make life as easy as we can for ourselves as we get older and wiser. And that usually happens when we get older, unfortunately. In Genesis 2, 28, God created everything and saw it was good and said to us, take dominion. 
he'd created everything. He'd created the heavens and earth, the plants, the animals. It was our playpen for us humans when he said, take dominion. Do what you can with it. And how are we doing? So far, you know, it changes with good and bad, but everyone is at a different stage of spiritual development, of spiritual expansion. And that gives us a chance to use unconditional love and all those other laws, the laws of giving and receiving, and prove these laws in our life and make use of that substance, that very stuff that we're made of, which will never leave us. I like in the Divine Matrix where Braden talks about the two. He explains the old and the new in today's speak. Same as what Yogananda did, as I said before. Having been brought up in the Methodist church in the Sunday school, I had the old King James Bible and took the names and the stories of the Bible literally. Well, the time has come to embrace science and spirituality. It's the same thing, that old song. Everything is, everything old is new again. It's just a different name for different stuff. What religions called spirit, science calls energy, consciousness and matter. Looking back over the names and cultures, there's been some great ones. The Buddhists, uh, Buddhists envision it as a net spreading out in all directions. It spreading out in all directions. I hope I Indians, this is a good one. A spider grandmother who spun a web connecting all things. How figurative is that? The Chinese used to call it the Tao, the way. The others, Allah, Buddha, Krishna, Shiva, now we're up to uh, conscious and intelligent mind and the quantum theory. But regardless of the names, it's the belief and feeling behind the names that we use to create its power, to invoke its power. One of the epiphanies in uh, Braden shares with us is the well known is well known to many fellow travelers on the path. Feeling is the language that speaks to the divine matrix, feeling. And when we pray, feel as though our goal is accomplished and our prayer is already answered. It is done unto us as our belief. That feeling behind the belief, it is all there waiting to be demonstrated. This is much clearer than the King James Bible version, which says from Matthew 5, verse 8, blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Some people can understand that, but with the new generations and the society now becoming more cosmopolitan and international, I'd like to think we can clear the terminology up a bit, and we are. Spiritual groups, not necessarily religious groups, often refer to the heart as the feeling body. Because the universal matrix senses our vibration. We feel people's vibration. All of us. We wouldn't be here if we didn't. We're all intuitive, wonderful people. And how many times have we gone into a room and thought, hmm, don't like this room. Or you go in there where something has been said and you, you feel awkward because you feel as if they were talking about you. Other times you might walk into a room, you might be feeling down and you walk into a room and you're lifted up. That feeling is there. So we know that prayer is more than just the words we say between our Father and Amen. Every thought, 
with feeling is a prayer. There's our song again, our thoughts, our prayers, but with feeling. So positive thoughts won't mask a fearful vibration. And affirmations and denials are practical ways to help us to gain that positive vibration. So to sum up, ooh, time's moving on. Um, let's have a look. I recommend the book by Unity Minister Ellen Devonport, which is called The Unity Five Principles. It's got all about the spiritual laws in it. And it's got a lot about it in modern speak. And the Unity Five Principles are condensed from the ancient wisdom, new thought, we call it. They provide a great guide for our daily living and our inner life. They can help answer such questions as what is the great presence that we sense around us? Who and what are we? Why do things happen in our life the way they do? How can we communicate with this presence? And what are we here to do? Regardless of the language we use, the divine matrix, our father, mother in heaven, it is always there and it won't let us go. So let's take that with us and throughout the week realize that whatever we do, we are always in the presence of spirit. Thank you.